going to see the council members up here more often this year. So one person, each of us going to come up here twice a year. Right. So we might not have very long small, but then you know, maybe it's, I can't grow long hair. I don't know why. I <laughs> right. Hey, can I have this light off? So I can see if you Is it? What do you want This light off? Is it okay? Let's just uh, sit down before we start. Father, thank you for this morning that we can come and worship you and come and receive from you also a word. Lord, I pray that you will use me that whatever that comes forth from me will be from you. That there will be nothing that is not from you, Lord. We have a message for all of us this morning. Lord, prepare us our minds and our hearts as well to receive. Okay, the verse this morning is from 1 Corinthians 9, 19 to 33. All things to all men. Right? Maybe I'll have someone to read for me. Maybe I'll have my mind to read for us. Right? Christopher, first to all men. Probably, sadly, silk, Indians, their spices, 
or tea, with tea, you guys can drink it in a cup of water. Right? So, this is the place where Paul was raised in. He was, raised, he was a city boy, he grew up with Roman, Greek, friends, Chinese, and Indian, Americans, probably not Americans, huh? right? And then, he was a good boy, as you can see, so good to the point that he literally stole his people because, you know, there was a law, so he followed the law to the letter. So uh, he was raised in a very strict Jewish family, I guess, that he had no qualms about killing someone. So he probably followed all the Mosaic laws. He had even prayed for seven days, seven months. Right? And he was a Pharisee, of course. You all know that story. It's famous for being a Pharisee, going around hunting Christians, killing them. But the turnaround was also miraculous. He was one of those apostles which didn't know Jesus, the so-called man Jesus. He was with he wasn't with the twelve who were following Jesus around. Those twelve were hardcore, not hardcore, those twelve were Jews as in they are from Kampong, full of Jews, Jews. This guy was from the city. So it's but still Jewish since he, he's a good Jewish boy. La. He grew up in an environment where it's not a Jewish kampong. Alright? So he encountered Jesus, not the Jesus the man, but Jesus God yes, who blinded him. You know the story? Just stay back for the last the, the, the video Bible study. Then you will see this one, this story here. Alright, so who did he write to? He wrote to, he wrote to the church of Corinth. Now, Corinth is also a city. It's a prosperous Greek city, but Greek city but under Roman rule at that time. And uh, he was also inhabited by Romans, Greeks, Jews, Chinese, Indians, Nigerians. Right. And uh, it was the Hellenistic era at the time. I don't know why he used the word Hellenistic, but the main religion at the time in that area was the Greek religion, where they had the uh, 12 main deities, Zeus. And Corinth was, Corinth was uh, the people that they dedicated the city. God Apollo. And besides that, they had a big temple as well to the goddess uh, Aphrodite. And it's a, I guess, a very important city. So Aphrodite, this religion, uh, very, very interesting. Uh. So they have temple prostitutes there. And it is so-called uh, holy thing to go there and along that positive right so that's why if you see the, the this letter to the, the Corinthians it also talks about sexual morality okay. so this, uh, this is the state that they are in so the church then after it was founded then it was a bit confused <coughs> a bit divided about their thoughts and they were also confused about their stand because at that time Christianity was how many years old? Probably younger than our grandmother the religion of Christianity at the time. So and it was spreading and people were and there was no Bible, there was no Torah, but no Bible yet. And then these people they were confused. Huh? They were the, and then the city there were the Jews and non-Jews and everyone is in the, the church. And Jews were like you gotta do this, and the Gentiles will, and the Gentiles will, you gotta do that. Then you'll see people around them like worshiping Apollo and food ID, and you know what you gotta do. Right? Next slide, please. Okay, so you can see Corinth is here. Here. And 
you notice it's a narrow stretch of land between two bodies of water. So that's how important it was. So instead of let's say you want to stand something here to push you on the other end, you will have to go through you take the boat all the way. So probably you will take a boat here. Uh, take a bullock cut here and take a boat there. So it was a prosperous city. There was a lot of trade there. And this is some, uh, nothing related to what I'm going to say, but uh, it's also interesting fact. You see here, this is the whole big uh, mass of land. Sputa! Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. And then. This is the only route on land which you can access this whole peninsula. So Korin was also a military stronghold. This is where you block people from entering. So I don't know where the Spartans fought, but if I were them, I would, I would choose here. It was easier to run across rather than you know, get about sheets and things like that. Okay. Yeah, this is the city of Corinth, the ruins. Uh, and they have a, what they call a Acropolis, a city on a hill. <laughs> so the hill is easily defendable. Of course, not the whole city is there. See the ruins down there. But the, the government and the temples are there. Right? Okay, now. The verse. For though I am free from all men, I have made myself a servant to all, that I may win the all. Now, this is from Paul. So, Paul was saying that he is a free man. At a time, slavery is a common practice. In fact, slavery was a common practice until very recent. Very very recent. You know the I think the famous one is the American the Yankees against the Confederates against the I don't know I don't know my American history. By the time slavery was all very common, you can read the Bible as well. Jesus never even never even condemned slavery as an accepted part of life. But Paul, he said that he was a free man in a sense that he was born free, not born a slave or not sold to slavery. So he got, he had a freedom to choose whatever he wanted to do. He to build tents and make a fortune. Good. And also he was, this after his conversion, so he was free from the Mosaic law. So the Jews, you know, they had a lot of laws, you read Deuteronomy, you know, so many chapters of our laws. Can't do this, can't do that, you have to do this, you have to do that. Can't it pop, can't it steal you? What a shame. But Paul, Paul, he was a Jew, he was a Jew. But he also recognized he was one of those Jews who embraced studio. Right. Really. The other twelve they had trouble embracing it because they were used for the campo. This guy was city boy. Really he just I guess you know, he, he could see after the blindness went away to see how still the blind tastes like I guess. So uh, that's his freedom as well. So, I guess we are also free in a sense. We are like Paul, free to choose whatever we want to do. We have uh, freedom with limitations in this country, but I think we are free enough to choose what we want to do. And we are definitely not Jews, so.
but you can think of it this way lah. Uh, we are definitely, def definitely we definitely have more liberties compared to the majority of people in this country. Which are the Malays. Malays equals Muslim in this country by law. So, that is our freedom. Okay. Okay, next. Right. And here's the part when the rapping starts. And to the Jews, I became as a Jew, that I mean Jews. To those who are under the law, as under the law, that I mean. I mean those who are under the law. And those who are without law, as without law. But being without, but not being without law, was God under the law was Christ. Then I may mean those who are without law, the wind will be getting sweet and the wind will be. So, in a nutshell, what is there is you got to be what your audience is, or you got to be relevant, relevant to them. Firstly, you got to know your audience. Uh, this one is the first step. You got to know your audience, and of course, the people are the humans. You got to know who they are, like your colleagues. Your friends from school, your boss, your subordinate, your paintball friends, your badminton friends, your football friends. So, first thing is you got to invest some time getting to know them. And then, secondly, oh yeah, you can see from there that he was talking about a very diverse group of people. The law, without the law, and it applies to Malaysia very easily. I went to China and there's Chinese everywhere. It's just Chinese. It's just Chinese, really. You see the odd white over there, of course in Shanghai, in the, there's a lot of expats there. You see the odd white over there, in one out of 1,000, you can see on the street. There's all the Chinese and everybody speaks Mandarin. Everybody. When you come to Malaysia, there's one thing that's special about Malaysia. Uh, you see Chinese, Indians, Nigerians, Malay, Kazakhstan, Mongolia. But it was also the same back then in the city of Korea. There were Romans, there were Greeks, there were Jews. These probably are the majority. Uh, but besides that, you know the Romans. That area has been conquered by many nations. They're bringing slaves from other parts of the world. So don't be surprised that you find other ethnic groups there. They don't have elephants. Yeah. They have elephants, they have lions fighting their <coughs> so-called gladiators. Do you find lions there in, the, in that part of the world? So I would say no. You don't find elephants there as well. You can find camels there. So, you know animals go there, this kind of animals, so people are definitely there as well. Okay, so, uh, to be, to be relevant, you can't afford to be ignorant. You have to be in touch with the real world. There's this danger of us being too comfortable in a Christian circle, a Christian group, they have lose touch with the world. The most dangerous thing to do is when you, when you, know, you say to someone who is not Christian, you say, the Bible says that. Blah 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 blah. The person says, well, the Bible is nothing to me. Huh? Correct? Because you got to know the person. You can say that I believe that, and the person will. Listen at least, because he knows you, he is friend, or you are a friend. I believe that this is this, because this. And then they will just, and then you know, you, 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 you know them and you talk to them in a manner that they understand. Rather than, the Bible says this, the Bible says that. And then, you know what, they don't care what the Bible says. Okay, okay, next. Yeah. 
those who don't follow the law. He wants to win the league. But in the final, the last part, he uses the word say. He uses win five times for this. Win, 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 win. And then the last is says say. So what's the difference? I think the significance of change is you win, meaning that Say, when you say, I do this because I believe, blah blah blah, that person is open to this thing to you. But then ultimately, you've got to try to save some. Okay, maybe, maybe you get the person's favor. By the end of the day, you've got to try to save them. So, you've got to learn how to, I think, in our lives, we might have trouble. We need some people, but we already have what so that they are one over with our very charismatic character, our handsome and pretty looks, and our ability to shoot someone with a devil gun. So, but then now we have to make a conscious effort to think of a way of how to say that because. At a certain point, there comes a point that you have to save some, right? It's not just about getting your paper. So, uh, anyway, if you did the win part right, and they observe you close enough, probably they might ask you about your pain even before you're ready to share it. So be ready. Be ready. Right, so the uh, final slide. To what end? Okay. Now, this I do for the gospel's sake, that I may be partaker of it. Okay. So, I think to wrap this up, I just want to say we do not lower our standards, but we waive our privileges. Okay. In the beginning, I started with how we have the freedom of choice. We, have a, we can choose to live a comfortable life, relax, chill, earn a lot of money, drive a Ferrari. But, as taking Paul as an example, he has chosen to serve people. To, to win, everyone is not easy. How many of us, statistically, have the same? Uh, statistics, statistics of friends as what Malaysia is. How many of us have 16 percent Malay friends? How many of us have me included? I don't have. My friends are not 16 percent Malay. Yeah. <laughs> so if we can, it, it needs our sensitivity to towards their religion, towards their cultures, if we need to cover up our legs when we go out and hang out with them, if we need to forgo uh, wine or to dine with them, then so do we do that. Because I think we are placed here and it will be dumb to say that, it will be ignorant to say that, are not supposed to reach out to the Malays. So, uh, learn your language based on natural language. Many of us find it very, very difficult to speak to learn Malay. Uh, so, not to say, I mean, the expectation is not to say that, but, you know, at least can, uh, at least the person understand what you're trying to say. Maybe. At least you understand what the person is trying to say to you. Okay. Uh, and uh, you know, we have to choose to go through those kind of those kind of inconveniences. Even, and we have the freedom to choose. So make a choice, make a choice to serve others. Because that's how you gain others as well. People don't People don't open their hearts to you 
my users planning stories or letting them on the conditions. People uh, open themselves to you if you show that you're sincere uh, rather than you go and you know hard sell to them, hard sell to the or something. But just to be sincere. Uh, if, you're, if you're open to to changing your your lifestyle to suit them when you're with them, I think they'll feel sincere. So, uh, reverse self-sacrifice, diligence, awareness, definitely wisdom, wisdom to discern where the line is, how to cross it, and I out of the that's where the sincerity comes, shines through. Okay. And, uh, right. So, to the next, next slide, the last one. So, don't forget, whatever we do, Got the bridge man and God. So be all things to all men. Don't complain or think, you know, why is the person so difficult? Be all things to all men. And ultimately, this is why. You got to win people to save people. Okay? Uh, I hope today you all, you all, I hope this message is relevant to you all. Especially in a diverse country of cultures, race and religion in Malaysia. And not just that, I mean, you have people in different stages of life. You don't talk to a kid like you talk to an adult. You don't talk to, uh, to uh, someone who is elder. With all experience, they have to talk differently. Right? So, that's the reason why. So I hope you all consciously make a decision to be all things to all people. Okay, so thanks for sharing this morning. Thank you very much.